Let's kick some! Holy shit! Turrets! Take cover! Ah! That was close. Ah! When we got our first real look at Saints Row back in May, we said that the reboot feels like it sits somewhere between Saints Row 2 and 3. As someone who preferred the slightly more serious tone of the second game to the straight-up zaniness of the third, I'm glad to say that after sitting down and playing a few hours of it for myself, the 2022 reboot definitely feels more like an action comedy from the likes of Matthew Vaughn or James Gunn than a straight-up farce from National Lampoon. Though it also keeps a healthy dose of that bombastic action which made the later game so fun too. <laughs> That's right. Now at this point, we've seen plenty about Saints Row's extensive customization options, so I won't spend too much time rehashing that, aside from saying that Volition definitely doesn't seem to be overselling that aspect of it. There are loads, to the point where even the voice option you select will sometimes change what language your character's inner monologue speaks in. Fall in line. Fall in line. Get out. The overall setup for your takeover of the fictional southwestern burg of Santo Eleso, a blend of real-world cities like Reno, Austin, and of course Las Vegas, looks to be staying true to the series' DNA. As the unnamed boss of a gang of underdogs, you and your motley crew of would-be crime lords take on three rival factions in order to make a name for yourselves and take control of the city's criminal underworld. I feel like there's a lot we're missing. There is, but it's enough to go on for now. This time, however, your anti-hero feels tailor-made for millennials and Gen Z. You begin the game reluctantly working as a mercenary in order to pay off your student loans, while your NPC roommates have joined other gangs to subsidize their aspirational careers as influencers and art historians. These new saints are born out of a relatable blend of desperation and disdain for the status quo, though thankfully the writers don't seem to be trying to sell us on the saints as the public heroes they became later in the original run. I want you to follow it. So I can kill everyone and retrieve the stolen goods. So we know where they're going. Sure, and then I kill everyone and retrieve the stolen goods. Now, not every gag landed. We get it, millennials like brunch. But I walked away wanting to see where the next chapter of these plucky psychopaths' story would take them next, and most of the missions that the story strings together were equally enjoyable. While there's definitely an abundance of drive here and or shoot these guys, my demo also shuffled up the action with set-piece encounters or particularly wild scenarios fairly regularly. It seems that Saints Row isn't afraid to blatantly pull inspiration from a variety of pop culture sources. One lengthy chase was reminiscent of the convoy sequence from Uncharted 4, while another mission had me tearing through city streets with a shipping container tethered to my bumper like in Fast and Furious. The more bombastic of these encounters were easily where the reboot felt closest to the later games in the original series, though rather than making you the undisputed source of those madcap shenanigans both on mission and in the open world, it seems to be much more focused on dropping you into the middle of that mayhem and letting you blast your way out. Better. For instance, while the most recent Saints Row games were perhaps best known for their insane arsenal of slapstick weaponry, I didn't see one dildo bat or gun that shot sharks. That doesn't mean they aren't there, of course, but in my roughly four hours of playtime, the craziest thing I fired was a rocket launcher. Well, I got an RPG and some shit to work out, so let's see how that goes for them. There were some wild weapons being used against me, but your own arsenal seems to be a bit more traditional. Controlling combat was roughly what I expected, gunplay that's more about explosive stylish action than precision aiming or expert timing, though that doesn't mean any or all strategy has been thrown out the window. Many of your abilities are now tied to skills and perks that require you to fill meters as you fight. The infamous awesome button from Saints Row III, for example, has been replaced by a takedown meter that charges as you get kills and will not only perform one of those cool finishing moves, but also refills a portion of your health bar if you've taken damage. Other abilities, which are unlocked as you level up your boss, can be assigned to hotkeys and used when you gain enough flow in combat. These include active abilities like temporary health and stat buffs, smoke bombs that hide you from enemies, or that Pineapple Express move that's been shown off in trailers. Speaking of, I was surprised to learn that it seems that, aside from some scripted events, these abilities are the only thrown explosive options you've got, with the ability to toss a frag grenade without dropping it down some guy's pants locked off until you hit level 7. That doesn't feel like a particularly frustrating hurdle, though, as I unlocked it towards the end of my demo, a demo that covered what essentially felt like a lengthy prologue, ending right around when my boss and their band of misfit pals actually start their journey up the criminal ladder in earnest. Wow, at least we've got a cool logo. And those early hours definitely weren't spent bemoaning a lack of a throw grenade button. Not only was tossing a bad guy into a crowd of other goons and or their cars to create a gooey, fiery mess pretty great every damn time, but there was, as you might expect, a ton of side content to check out as well. As we've seen in trailers and other exclusives here on IGN, franchise favorite side jobs like insurance fraud and mayhem are returning, alongside plenty of new distracting activities like a wave defense mode whose difficulty is determined by how poorly you rate a business on the Saints Row equivalent of Yelp. 
literally just digging through trash, and a delightfully challenging minigame where you attempt to steal an armored car with a helicopter, complete with bonus objectives that really challenge you to fight against its hair trigger physics. Good enough. We'll take it from here. And that madness isn't reserved for the moments when you've got a Brinks truck or a shipping container hooked to your ride either. Even with four wheels firmly on the ground and nothing dragging behind me, there was no shortage of spectacular crashes, flips, and jumps. Which I suppose is to be expected from a game that awards you extra XP for driving on the wrong side of the road or almost hitting other cars. That said, while the addition of Burnout-style shunting, ramming, and sideswiping is definitely a big plus, driving did feel floaty at times, and it was tough to get a handle on the difference between using the handbrake button to perform what they call a quick turn, and just drifting until I slam my car into the nearest building and whatever poor trees or NPCs happen to be standing in front of it. I'll mostly blame my vehicular mishaps on it being my first time behind the wheel, though there were some technical bumps that I can't take credit for. Ah! Mostly some LOD poppin' and frame rate hitching, though we did at one point get locked into a menu and have to restart our PC build, and once ended up with an empty weapon wheel. But ultimately, these errors were mostly just inconveniences and didn't detract too much from what was overall a good time. On the whole, Saints Row is shaping up to be an action-packed mix of satire and slapstick mayhem, which, for me at least, sounds like a great recipe for some much-needed destructive escapism. My time with it might not have been perfect, but the life of a career criminal never is, especially one sharing a two-bedroom apartment with three other people. But any game that lets me raise hell in a bulldozer is one that I'm eager to play more of. You can read my full impressions of our extended demo on IGN.com, and for more on Saints Row, check out our exclusive look at some of the updated side jobs, or listen to Volition's devs break down every secret in last year's reveal trailer. For all your other amateur crime lord needs, stick around on IGN. Called for a ride?